Hey guys, so if any of you received an air fryer over the holidays and you're looking for some new things to make in it, well today I thought I would share six new air fryer recipes you can make in this handy little gadget. Okay, so first up, did you know that you can make blueberry muffins in your air fryer? I know, right? So I tried it and they are so delicious and so easy. And the best part is that when you wanna make muffins and you don't want a whole dozen muffins, you can just make three. So the first thing to know about air fryers is if you're gonna be using anything inside them, like a ramekin or a dish, it just has to be oven safe. So not microwave safe, so you can't actually put plastic in it, but if it's oven safe, you're good to go. So for this recipe, I'm gonna be using three one cup ramekins I'm gonna line them with a jumbo muffin paper. So this is the other thing I learned. You actually can't use the regular muffin papers because the way that the air fryer technology works is it uses air. So the muffins need a lot of room in order to rise. And if they're too squeezed in a smaller muffin paper, they actually don't cook inside. They get really browned on top, but then don't actually bake all the way through. So that's tip number one. Then in a medium sized bowl, we're going to add one egg, a third of a cup of white sugar, a third of a cup of vegetable oil, two tablespoons of water, and a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then one teaspoon of freshly grated lemon zest. So you can whisk that all together until combined, and then in a smaller bowl, you're gonna whisk together the dry ingredients. And all it is is just two thirds cup of all-purpose flour, a half a teaspoon of baking powder, and an eighth of a teaspoon of salt. You can whisk that all together until it's combined and then slowly add it to your wet ingredients, whisking all the while until it's totally incorporated. And then the final step is to add half a cup of fresh blueberries. Then you're gonna transfer this batter into your ramekins just using a standard size ice cream scoop. Then you're gonna place these ramekins in your air fryer, set the temperature for 350 degrees, and then set the timer for about 15 minutes. So I like to check it at 15 minutes. If you feel that they're still not done inside, you could go another two minutes. But really 17 minutes should do the trick. And then when you open your air fryer, you're gonna see these beautiful blueberry muffins, all golden brown with those berries bursting. Now do be careful because those ramekins are extremely hot. They're a little hard to get out with an oven mitt. So I typically like to take a dish towel and just go in and remove the ramekin. Then you can go in and remove the papers. And there you have it. Okay, next up, a delicious broccoli and cheddar quiche. Now this is a crustless quiche, so it's a lot quicker to make because there's no pie dough you have to deal with. The air fryer does something to eggs. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the air or the way that they're baked, but it's such a gentle heat that when they come out, they're light and fluffy and so delicate and so delicious too. So we're gonna be baking these in a five inch ceramic quiche dish. And you wanna just spray it lightly with baking spray. And then you're gonna add five mini florets of broccoli. Doesn't have to be cooked. You can just put it in there raw. And then in a small Pyrex pitcher, you're gonna crack in one egg and then fill up your pitcher to a half a cup with heavy cream. Then you can whisk that all up until it's combined and then slowly pour it into your quiche dish. And then you're gonna to top it with a tablespoon of finely shredded cheddar cheese. So I'm just using the Mexican blend cheddar cheese. You wanna do the finely shredded because they're not in there for very long and the finely shredded will actually melt quicker than the thicker shredded. Then you're gonna put your dish in the air fryer. You're gonna set the temperature for 325. So these do bake at a lower temperature and I think that's why the eggs end up so soft and delicate. And then you're gonna go for 10 minutes. And after the 10 minute mark, when you open that air fryer, you will see the most delicious quiche waiting for you. This is so quick and easy that it's great for a weekday breakfast if you're running out the door, or I also make them for lunch. <laughs> Okay, now next up, you haven't lived until you've had a grilled cheese sandwich in the air fryer. Not only is it so much quicker and easier than putting it in a pan, but the crispiness that you get, and then the cheese underneath gets all melty, it is like the best thing in the world. So my one tip with making a grilled cheese sandwich in an air fryer is to use white sandwich bread because they do get so crispy. If you're using like denser, um, thicker bread, they tend to get a little bit too hard and crunchy, but that white sandwich bread, that is like perfect because it's crunchy, but also still soft and chewy. So you're just gonna brush some melted butter on each side of the bread. And then for our cheese, I like to use three slices and do an assortment. So I'll do a sharp cheddar, a Swiss, and then a mozzarella. And the combination of those three cheese varieties is so good. Pop it in the air fryer at 350 and let it go for 10 minutes. So one of the things that I love about the air fryer is that it's hands-free cooking. So you can have your grilled cheese sandwich going while you're heating up your tomato soup. And I've got a couple of great recipes for tomato soup. I'll leave you links in the description. 
But then once your grilled cheese sandwich is done, you'll see it's all toasty and the cheese is all melty. And then serve it with your tomato soup, which is all ready to go. This is a really quick and easy lunch idea, or you could also make it for an easy dinner. Okay, so now we had to include something sweet because sometimes you get the craving for something sweet and you don't want to make a full dessert. You just want a bite or two. Well, I discovered you can actually make these really delicious baklava bites in the air fryer. So baklava can be pretty time consuming to make and then you're stuck with a big pan of baklava, which is pretty sweet. But you can make these, which are so much quicker and easier and just have a bite or two of baklava when the craving strikes. So you wanna be using about seven to eight sheets of the phyllo dough, and you wanna cut it to four inches by four inches. Then you're gonna brush melted butter, not on every sheet, but maybe every two. Then you're going to place a tablespoon of finely chopped walnuts in the center. Then on top of the walnuts, you're gonna drizzle a teaspoon of honey, then a little pinch of cinnamon, and then a little bit of orange zest. Then you're gonna bring all those corners together and kind of create like a little purse with it. So if you press the phyllo dough down, it will actually stick to the honey that's underneath and create these fun little kind of purse designs. Then you're going to place it in the air fryer at 375 degrees Fahrenheit and go for anywhere from seven to 10 minutes. And once it's done, you'll see how cute they look. And the phyllo dough creates this really beautiful top and garnish with some finely chopped pistachios. This is a great little dessert to serve if you're having people coming over for coffee last minute, or if you just want a little bite of something sweet after dinner and not take the time to make a full dessert. Okay, next up, chicken tenders. Now I know that this is as cliche as it gets when it comes to the air fryer. Everybody's making the chicken tenders and the mozzarella sticks, but <laughs> there's a reason why they're making them. They're pretty good. And I've really perfected my chicken tender recipe for the air fryer, and I just had to share it with you because they're just too good. You're going to take a pound of chicken tenders, make sure that you salt each one on both sides because this is going to create a really moist and juicy chicken tender. Then in a medium sized bowl, you're going to combine two thirds cup of panko breadcrumbs. I love the panko breadcrumbs because it creates a really nice crunch to the chicken tenders, but we're gonna mix that with some traditional breadcrumbs. If you wanna get the Italian breadcrumbs, you can, or you can use the plain breadcrumbs and just add a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. And then we're also gonna add a third of a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. I do think that's the secret ingredient because it does help all the breadcrumbs bind together when it starts to melt in the air fryer and it does give you one more level of flavor. And then in a shallow bowl, crack in two eggs and give those a whisk. There, now we have everything ready to go. And then the next thing you wanna have ready is a sheet pan lined with parchment paper because this is going to hold our chicken tenders as we start to bread them. So you wanna take one chicken tender, dip it in the egg bath, then dip it in the breadcrumb mixture and cover it all with the breadcrumbs, packing it down, making sure it's adhering, and then transfer it to the baking sheet. And just repeat this process until all your chicken tenders are breaded and ready to go. And then once you have all your chicken tenders laid out on your sheet pan, I do like to give them a spray with some olive oil. So this is my other thing that I have discovered when cooking in the air fryer. These little olive oil spray cans are really the way to go because it allows you to put a little bit of oil so that you get a little bit better crunch without drenching the thing in oil if you were just drizzling it. Then you can place three or four in your air fryer, whatever fits, and then you're gonna bake them at 350 for just 12 minutes. And I find you don't even have to flip them. They actually get really crispy on the bottom side too. Now, if you're preparing this for a dinner, I would take the ones that are cooked, put them on a sheet pan, and pop them in a 250 degree oven just to keep them warm while you go through the rest of the batch. Then once all the chicken tenders are done, I like to put them on a platter, sprinkle a little bit of fleur de sel sea salt on top, and then a little bit of freshly chopped parsley. And then I also like to serve two dipping sauces with these. So I'll do a honey mustard, which is quite good. And then I'll also do a ranch for the traditionalists. They seem to like that. <laughs> and I'll leave you my recipes for these dipping sauces in the description. Now, a really delicious thing to serve with these chicken tenders are some potato wedges. And they're also super simple to make. All you need is one russet potato. I leave the skin on because I actually think it protects the potato a bit more and keeps it from becoming too dried out in the center. So just cut your potato in half then cut each half in half, and then cut those quarters into three equal size slices. And then you'll have a potato wedge that's roughly a quarter of an inch in size. Spray them with your olive oil spray, add a little salt and pepper to taste, and a tablespoon of freshly minced rosemary. Then you're gonna place these in the air fryer 
Arrange them so that they're as single layer as possible so that all the air can circulate and cook them at the same rate. And then I like to do a lower temperature, longer air fry for potatoes, just to make sure that they don't get too golden brown and that the insides aren't cooked. So I find 350 is really the way to go. And once they're done, you can put them in a little serving platter. And I like to serve these with some smoky ketchup. So you basically just take about a quarter cup of store-bought ketchup, add a few shakes of smoked paprika, give it a stir, and that's all you have to do. And you have like the fanciest ketchup. It's so good with these fries. Now, if you missed my first video, five awesome recipes to make in the air fryer and want to get caught up, you can click this annotation and head over there and I'll show you how to make five new air fryer recipes. All right, you guys, I'll see you over there.